Alright everybody, today I am back with another Nomad Survival video and I just kind of wanted to do a really quick video just in regards to the Sacrificial Ritual achievement um, because I've seen a couple questions on exactly like where do I need to stand, how do I get there, you know, so on and so forth and I know my other video shows kind of what I think is the best build at the time to basically take care of this but I'm just going to go over a couple of things one more time just to give a refresher and show a couple of things that I did not show at the time which is mostly just how to get there and where exactly you need to stand so sacrificial ritual is the achievement that you need to get so that you can unlock the whisperer which is a very fun class so it's a really important achievement the achievement is to defeat the first three boss enemies within the ruined dungeon while standing atop the sacrificial circle so you only have to kill the first three bosses you don't have to kill the last one the first two bosses really not that big of a deal the hardest one is going to be the third one and it really just depends on where he spawns um now with a couple of the changes to some of the abilities and the passive changes it, this is a little bit easier but still one of the more difficult achievements so i just kind of wanted to go over exactly what i think you could do to make it a little bit easier on yourself basically so uh, I'll turn enemy speed down and just have everything on normal. Um, actually, I might turn enemy speed up just for, just for fun. No, I'll just leave it the same. But so here is the spawn point, right? You spawn in this hallway. There's a little door right here, which is pretty cool. Little addition. Nothing over there that does anything, but it is a pretty cool addition nonetheless. So sacrificial altar. You really have to get to the altar first for you to actually accomplish this achievement, and. I will show you guys where the altar is really quickly so it's a little misleading because you can see the altar it's right here right you can see this but as far as you're aware you know you try and walk around to get to where you can enter but there's no entrance here right so obviously if you have played on this map before you'll know that there's those little doorways basically that you can use to kind of transfer yourself to another location on the map like so so this this little hole right here are things you could walk through on this map there's a couple there's this one there's one over here to the left and they just kind of take you back and forth around the map basically it's a it's a way to move i recommend it when maybe you're getting swarmed but other than that sometimes it can get a little dicey it's not something you want to like constantly go back and forth between because that's how you rack up a ton of monsters in the same spot and then you'll teleport through and you'll just kind of die so here we are back at the start of the map and i will show you guys how to get to where you're supposed to go through to get to the sacrificial altar it's pretty straightforward you're just gonna head north basically and you can go left but i'll show you to the right because it's a little bit faster you'll go through the little doorway that i showed you earlier this takes you up into the center and you'll just take a left and you'll wait until you get to this hallway this hallway is the only way that you can get up here so that's why you have to go in this direction it takes you to this top area which is the most northern part of the map you can see that the map ends right here and you'll just walk all the way to the right go up, down around these holes and up around this little crevice right here until you come down here and you'll see this little walkway right here now this walkway is the door that you need to go to that's going to teleport you all the way to the bottom of the map and then you'll be on this thin walkway and if you go up a little bit here is the altar so now as we read the achievement only you need to be on the altar you don't need the boss to be on the altar only you so the hardest boss is the third one and that's just gonna be because so many other things are spawning the little spirits so it makes things a little bit more difficult right so I have a few suggestions in regards to what you need to do but a helpful thing is if you kill a boss and you're standing on the circle and you think you got it the easiest way to check is going to be these red circles so as you kill the boss you'll see this one has a one this one has a two this one has a three those stand for each one of the bosses and as you kill them those red circles will fill in they're normally empty it'll be like the same color as the ground so if you kill a boss and you want to know if you actually got it or not that will turn on if it doesn't you don't have to do all three in the same run you can just do them in one run 
or, or sorry in multiple runs so say you don't get the first boss right keep playing the game out you know go for the second one go for the third one and same thing if you miss the second or the third one just continue trying until you're able to get all of them and this isn't something that you might do in one try i didn't do it in one try the third boss was definitely the most difficult um took me you know three or four to get actually that third boss a couple of times i was like standing down here because the most difficult thing about the third boss is the little dudes that spawn at the same time so i'm gonna go ahead and skip to the third boss just so i could show you guys one more time how to take care of that last boss and i might actually just do all three so i will skip ahead actually this one's gonna spawn here in 10 seconds so we'll show you the first boss the first boss not that big of a deal you're just gonna want to play basically uh dodge his ability if he stands on you yes he does do damage but uh the ability isn't that bad and so if you see you know it's getting down to half maybe you want to start moving your way back up here and then just just take the additional damage right it's okay if you take a little damage from the boss it's not gonna just obliterate you in two seconds so if you need to stand in there for a second take the extra damage even if you only get that one boss and you end up dying because of it i can tell you that killing the boss and then dying a second after is perfectly fine you don't have to finish the run to get the achievement still so if you're gonna pick between you know dying but you're gonna kill the boss or possibly finishing your run and not killing the boss on the circle i recommend just killing the boss dying you get the achievement you get the new character and then you can get back to winning the game you know so i'll go ahead and skip to 14 minutes where the second boss spawns all right guys so this second boss is gonna spawn here and that is gonna be at 14 minutes uh builds looking all right i'll go over the build kind of at the end of the video uh just because i feel like there's a specific meta that just makes the game extremely easy in comparison to every other build and if you're trying to focus on doing a you know challenge like this you generally want to go with the more meta build just to make sure things are as you know not exactly foolproof, but uh, you have the highest odds of winning, right? So here's the second boss, has more HP, but does less damage because it's generally spending a lot of time summoning. So just like, you know, I just showed, he doesn't really make a lot of moves towards you. So I definitely recommend just standing still. Uh, directional abilities are fantastic against him, but things like Fireball and Magic Missile are also very, very strong. But the first two bosses, very very simple in comparison to the third boss so that is going to be the second one i will go ahead and skip to the third boss show you that final kill and then kind of just go over general ideas and best kind of situations for this type of achievement all right guys so the boss is going to spawn here in a second and i kind of wanted to go over the things you need to look for in, for this third boss so the first thing is going to be crystal spawn location if you are up in this top area where you get to take the door away to the sacrificial altar, not exactly where the crystal spawns, but just in the general area, this is going to increase the likelihood that the crystal spawns up here. You want this so it can make your life a little bit easier. It's not that big of a deal now with this certain build, but I will talk about that a little bit later. So if you can get it to spawn up here and you can take care of it in this first minute, that is something you want to look for. The next thing that is very, very important is that you want to make sure you are down on the altar by the time the boss spawns. The worst case scenario for this is that you are not down there when the boss spawns. The boss spawns all the way up here, and then you teleport down to Sacrificial Altar, right? But the thing you don't know about this boss, it has full map range, and it can hit you as many times as possible. So when you're standing down there on that altar, right? And the boss is just shooting you all the way across the map. It has to make it all the way down there. You also have to avoid the specters. So you want to you wanna wait till the last possible second to go into this doorway, right? So we'll go down there here in a second. It also is good because the specters won't be next to you. So we'll go through this doorway. Get onto the altar. This boss spawn right next to us. And easy. Alright. So kind of want to go over why that was so simple, right? first two things were the things we just talked about you want to make sure you are going to the altar as the boss is spawning this is going to make the boss spawn closer to you that means you're going to get more damage off on it and you're going to be able to not have to dodge the specter for as long in regards to weapon skills that are going to make this very simple fireball max level is the best bossing damage in the game i don't know how to say this other than that 
if you get fireball up to level 10 you're gonna have a much easier time than if you had any other ability uh icicle barrage is great you know chain light shock magic missile all that good stuff but fireball has insane bossing damage so get fireball you don't need relics just get fireball the reason why it is so easy though to not have to worry about the rest of it and even the damage honestly is because of some changes made to passives so two passives i want to recommend for this guide are going to be death sting and miniaturize so miniaturize is the one that increases your evasion and here let me just go ahead and hit escape for you i have 80 percent evasion so if you include miniaturize which gives you shoot it's like pretty close to 70%. I want to say it's like 6% per level and then the last one is 15%. So it's going to be 61%, I think, maybe somewhere a little bit around there. And then you add in the evasion from your store, so the ones that you spend coins on, as well as the fox pet. Highly highly recommend fox pet. That's going to increase your evasion all the way up to 80%, and with that, you are going to pretty much dodge the large majority of damage anyway, so you don't really have to worry about too much. This includes the specters, because they just count as abilities, and you can dodge them. While they tick a lot more often, you're still dodging them a lot, so you don't have to worry about it. The other thing is Death Sting, and I would throw in Colorless Glyph, because these two kind of go together. So, Colorless Glyph just deals all, not a lot of damage. It does Okay, that's a lie. It deals a lot of damage, but that's not what we're going for. It really deals damage quickly and efficiently so death sting is the passive that increases your chance to one shot a mob basically by one percent and then at level 10 you have 15 percent total and so you know you you see the one percent and you don't really think it adds up a lot but if you throw in the fact that you're dealing damage constantly throughout the whole game all the time you are actually proccing that chance a ton so if you can combine those two which is definitely the best way to clear out maps, by the way, if you're having issues with anything, because it doesn't have to deal with HP. You can 100% just waltz through all the mobs and not worry about it, because it's not about how much damage you deal, it's just about how many times you proc death, st or, uh, death sting. And for the most part, you can wipe out everything on the screen, regardless of what HP is. So map modifiers too, it's going to be the best combo. And then... Lastly, for character, feel free to do whatever you want. I recommend Nomad for the heritage at least, because that way you are able to get as many rolls as possible so you can get the abilities you need before the boss is spun. But the other thing, I like Crusader because the natural aura, which looks like colorless glyph, and then the weapon ability has a little knockback and that gives you a little extra time to stand on the altar and keep the boss away from you. So overall guys, that is gonna be all of my tips and tricks to just get this achievement done. I hope it helps. If you guys have any questions, definitely let me know. As always, thanks you for all of the subs and the views. I really appreciate it. And I will see you on the next one.